Hey, what's up, guys? Frosty here with another Team Online Strategy video. Uh, today, I'm very lucky, and you guys are very lucky as well, to be joined by Randy Nanonoko Lou. How's it going, Randy? Going well. Happy to be here. Yeah, thanks a lot. Well played, um, fans. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, well, uh, what I've got for you guys today is going to be the same format as before. Um, yeah, Randy was nice enough to send uh, send me two of his own hands, so we'll get a chance to look at some higher stake hands and really get into Randy's thought process of uh, of how he plays plays those games. Really, um, gonna start with two hands that I played, both at 100 and L6 max. Uh, like I said, just gonna be the same deal as before, where we go through go through the hands, uh, pause and talk um, street by street at all the important uh, important parts to talk about. Um, not going to go like too in, in depth on the HUD stats, but I've got a basic uh, basic HUD up there just to get a, a bit of an idea of who we're up against. But uh, yeah, in general, we're just going to be more talking about general game plan kind of stuff anyway. So it's just not going to really matter. So with that out of the way, let's just jump into the hands. Um, the first hand here, we got Ace Jack suited. Um, kind of like an unusual kind of like reg slash reg fish I'm not entirely sure uh, opens to 3x uh, yeah he's, I just say he's kind of unusual because he's playing 2113 which is sort of weird to see such a big gap between the uh, preflop raise percentage and the vpip um, and then if we dive a little bit deeper we can notice that he's opening only 7% uh, from MP which uh, is obviously extremely tight uh, and yeah, I've got Ace Jack suited here. I guess before I, we have a weaker player on the button, which is worth noting for sure. Um, I guess before I go any further, though, I just uh, like to ask Randy. I mean, what what would you do in this spot with like a weaker player left behind, and and maybe what would you do at a table full of full of decent regulars uh, when we're up against like such a tight opening range? Mm -hmm. Well, in general, when I'm trying to decide whether to like call or three bet a hand. I like to think about uh, the remaining players um, that haven't acted yet. And if the remaining players are kind of like aggressive, aggressive regulars that would like to pounce on weakness when they see it, then I'm more likely to three bet a hand because then players, they regulars tend to not want to play as many like four bet pots and, and things like that. So by three betting the hand, you know, I kind of like shut out all the other regulars unless they pick up like a premium hand. Whereas if I think that the regulars behind me are kind of like tighter players or players that are just uh, don't mind just coming along with calls rather than re-raises, then I don't mind calling because, you know, we keep the, the pot small. And, I, and the great thing about our situation in this hand is that we're going to be in position whether we call or three bet. So you really can't go too wrong going either way, in my opinion, in this spot. Yeah, right. I mean, yeah, we have we have obviously a playable hand here. I mean, if we three bet and get four bet, I mean that that kind of sucks. But uh, yeah, like you said, if if he calls, like we're still in position. And yeah, I mean, I see what you're saying. If if we call and get squeezed, I mean, depending on the player, we could probably call with this hand. But it's not uh, not a great spot, I guess. Um, but one of the main things uh, I would say is that when determining kind of like, one of the things I would be thinking about is how my opponent that, uh, you know, I'm in this case, you know, Whitco, or I mean, who's, who's still now, is uh, how does he play post-flop is one of the things I would be thinking about. If I feel that he just doesn't uh, make uh, great decisions post-flop or, you know, like, anything like of that sort, then a, I may consider three betting him if we've got deep enough stacks. In this scenario, I do feel, um, you know, 100 big blinds were deep enough because um, I'm going to be in position and playing big pots while in position is just going to be like a pretty good winning play for you. If you feel like he calls a lot of three bets, it's kind of one of the main things you want to think about too, is that if he calls a lot of three bets, then I don't mind three betting him like ace jack suited um, because he will be calling with hands that are dominated you know, like Jack Ten, King Queen Jack. You know, maybe even like Ace Ten, Ace Nine. So you're talking about the player, the weaker player on the button here, or the player that's openings. You know, I'm trying to like uh, the player that's opening mainly. Like, if I feel like he 
is uh, going to call with weaker hands, even out of position, then I don't mind three betting, isolating him with a hand like H Jack suited. And plus, like a lot of players, they like to four bet, like uh, you know, their premiums pre flop almost always. So you'll you'll have a pretty good idea where your H Jack suited stands if um, you three bet. But of course, calling is pretty good too. Um, just being in position to play multi way, you know, having to not flush draw. You know, pre-flop, uh, if some other guy's coming in with some spades, too, uh, you'll be able to pick up a nice pot if, if it comes a flush. Yeah, I mean, I guess that's sort of, sort of, I mean, sort of where my thought process was. I just, I didn't want to, like, three-bet such a tight range. I, I mean, I totally get what you're saying about um, mm -hmm. about him if he, if he will call with weaker hands or just doesn't four-bet a lot. Um, I just, like, wasn't sure, so I, I figured I'd just call, and then I, I figured, like, the player on the button would just call with, like, a super wide range, and, and we would just go from there. But, yeah, I, I mean, those are good points. I, I, I guess it could go yeah. either way. I think, ideally, I mean, like, standard-wise, I probably would say I would lean towards calling more. If you can really, like, get some good reads on this player, then you may have a good case for three-betting it. But sure. even though his range is kind of tight, like 7%, if he doesn't play like that well post-flop, then it's okay to call with H-Jack suit even against a tighter range because you're going to be in position. And when you do hit a hand, you'll be able to get a lot of value versus like some other players that don't really give you much action. Um, you know, I may just consider even folding this hand pre-flop. But I think uh, you, you might want to like, Get more reads about your opponent first before you start making like really big folds and, and things like that. Yeah, I, I totally agree. It definitely seems like a pretty player dependent spot. Um, but yeah, like I mean, like I said, I went ahead and called, and yeah, fortunately the weaker player came along on the button as well, and the blinds folded, and we went three way to the flop. Flop was Jack seven queen two hearts. Um, the reg checks here, and I, I think this is probably like. The, I don't know. I guess I guess later streets get pretty interesting too. But this is kind of like, you know, where the first big decision comes. Do we do we check or bet? I mean, I guess I'll just turn it over to you on that, Randy. And maybe maybe just add what you think. Uh, what you think of the regulars' ranges here once he checks? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Well, this is a three-way flop, and when he checks his flop, I actually think his range is pretty weak. I think a lot of times if he had you be you know, like a queen X plus like king queen, um, ace queen, you know, like those hands or kings or something. They're going to continuation bet this flop three ways. You know, it's a flush draw out there, straight draws. He's out of position. I think a lot of times they're just going to continuation bet this flop and try to, you know, charge some hands to find out where they're at or whatnot. So I don't actually think the the player, the preflop raiser is that strong. Um, what you should do here on a turn I think you can really go either way. With, All right, we're um, still we're yeah. still on the flop. I mean, yeah, um, <laughs> that's what I meant on the flop. Uh, what to do on flop? Um, I could go either way with betting or checking. Um, because one, I kind of like discount the original pre-flop raise. I just don't think he's that strong. So I'm I'm just going to kind of base my decision right. on what I think the the button player is going to do. <laughs> Um, yeah, I, I really could, I, I don't mind betting. It does get a little tricky when you bet and get called. It also gets a little bit tricky when you check and check call the button player if he bets. Um, it's really going to depend a lot on the turn cards and, you know, what he does. But if you, you were to go bet or check, um, I really wouldn't fault you for doing either one. Yeah, really. cool. Yeah, I, for, first of all, I guess I, I totally agree um, that the regular is probably pretty weak here. I mean, I, I think he has to be betting his value just given the fact that the weaker player is probably calling so wide. Um, you know, he just wants to start charging the weaker player. Like you said, the board's fairly wet too. I think, you know, on on the rare occasion, we could maybe see a check raise here from a super strong hand if he expects me to bet a lot. And then it could go like bet, the weaker player calls, and then he could check raise trying to trap the weaker player. But I think that's just not going to be a very high percentage of the time. So, yeah, I mean, I ended up checking in this spot, and I think I think I might like betting better in hindsight. I mean, my thinking at the time was that uh, weaker players just love 
stabbing when check to like so I, I mean I, and I, with this hand it's a little bit tough to get value from worse so I figured there might be a you know a pretty good chance he might just stab like pocket eights pocket nines uh, he's probably gonna do the betting for me with any jack x he'll probably bet any seven x but then you know the problem is if we check call I mean what do we do on the turn uh, there's gonna be so many turn cards that are gonna be tough to play obviously he, he can have us beat with the queen x himself so, I mean, I think I'd rather just bet this spot, maybe bet playing turns and check the side of the river, some kind of line like that. Um, but yeah, I mean, as played, I checked. I, and I think, yeah, I think it's, I, I think it's okay, but... I, I think, will say this, that um, one, like I said, like, I, I'm not too worried about the original guy. Like, if you think the button is going to bet a lot of his hands, whether he has you beat or doesn't have you beat, taking stabs like you said then i don't mind just uh i don't mind checking to let him do that because if he's going to be taking a stab with like ace two of you know spades you know something that doesn't hit the board or whatever you know ace two of clubs or something like that then you want him to take that stab but if you feel that the button player is actually going to check a lot even with like jack 10 jack nine or something like that then I'm going to want to bet myself to not give that free card to two players. But, you know, it's just going to be really what you think the button player is going to do a lot of times. Is he going to check a lot of his hands or is he going to bet a lot of hands? If he's going to bet a lot of hands, then I don't mind checking um, because he's still going to, when someone bets, they're going to fold out that pre-flop razor who who's got, might have some random outs of like pocket twos or something. So right. that's kind of what I'd be thinking about. Right, yeah, I, that, I totally agree. I mean, I, I was completely readless, uh, which, yeah, obviously kind of sucks. Um, mm -hmm. I, I guess another thing by checking, like, this it's, this hand plays pretty well by checking if it gets checked through, I think. Like, it, aside from maybe exactly a king, mm -hmm. I, we're still going to be able to, to probably just, you know, take yeah. the lead on the turn pretty comfortably. So I went ahead and checked, and the, the button bet half pot, which, which is kind of nice. I mean, I think once he bets half pot, we... We can probably assume we have the best hand most of the time. And the regular just folds, which is, again, pretty much ideal. And, yeah, I don't really see much merit for check-raising here. I mean, he, he can still bet queen X like this, but it's just such a weak sizing. I think it just looks so stabby. I think I just have to check-call here and, and feel pretty, yeah, good, I think pretty check good about my hand. Good. Yeah, check-calling is definitely pretty good here, especially, you know, you're out of position. And if you can, if it gets, like... You know, runs out low cards. It's it's fine to get like see a showdown with like not having to put too much in there, and that's what you want to do a lot of times with these like middling type hands. Right. So um, yeah, so we check call. We're feeling okay about it. Uh, then we turn to jack. So I mean, we're feeling pretty good about it now. Um, mm -hmm. I mean, yeah, I'm obviously just checking here. Gonna let him keep betting queen x, jack x, flush draw, seven x, random bluffs. So I go ahead and do that. Uh, and this time it's just weird because he bet half pot on the flop, and then he bet he bet goes ahead and bets full pot on the turn, and so like, I mean, I'm, at this point I'm thinking he's, he, his most likely holdings are probably a jack x, but, um, I mean, yeah, I, I obviously feel I have the best hand now, but uh, uh, do you, would you just check call this again? I mean, would you check raise here? I mean, yeah. Okay, so yeah, um, I. I like um, putting in more money now by raising because when he full, you know, when he, when someone goes like half pot and all of a sudden he full pots, it's kind of giving you the sign like, I like my hand. I don't really care what yeah, exactly. action goes on. So I want to put in as many chips as I can now. And if someone's giving me like big signs that he wants to put in the rest of the chips now, I'm going to give him the opportunity to do so, especially when I'm out of position. Because say you just check call because you're probably not going to fold any river you know if a bad if a scare card rolls off on a river and you have them beat you know you don't want him checking them back to river and then you're losing value that way it's like for example say you've got he's got like jack nine and then the flush hits and you know you check again and he's just like oh you might have a flush i check so you lose a lot of value in that sense so i like raising it now when he shows a lot of sign that he wants to get a lot of chips in that way you don't have to worry about a bad card coming on the river and you can uh get in the most chips with the, the most equity and especially if he's got like a flush draw you know you you don't want him to see a free turn like a, a river 
uh, so cheaply if he's willing to put some more chips in, especially when he pots it. So I, I like the raise. Yeah, for all those reasons, I, I just completely agree. Um, as far as sizing goes, I mean, uh, would you just check shove or would you check raise small? Um, I might make it like 60 euros or something like that. Um, it probably doesn't make too much of a difference. Right. Um, yeah, yeah I, I, I was just thinking. I don't know uh, if I would check shove. I don't want to check shove, I think, because uh, sometimes players, like when they, when you raise them a little bit small, they get a little bit stubborn, like, oh, he only raised me a little bit, so I'm going to continue with my hand. Whereas if you just check shove all in, he might, um, you know, he might say to himself right now, uh, I'm committed with his hand. But when he sees such a really big bet, he might just get a little bit scared and just cold feet and just be like, oh, uh, well, actually, now that I think about it, my opponent's never going to do this without a, a big hand. So I'm going to make a big fold. So so I like raising in the sense that it's not all in to let him kind yeah. of feel attached to the pot. Yeah, that, that's pretty much exactly what I was thinking, too. I, I mean, I, I basically, you know, I, I broke it down like this. If... If we're beat by queen jack or pocket sevens, it's not going to matter. Uh, if I check shove, he's probably folding his flush draws. I mean, there's a chance he doesn't, but I think most people would fold the flush draw here. And uh, yeah, I mean, if it has jack X, if he has jack X, it's just not going to matter. It, I mean, maybe if maybe a heart will slow the action on the on the river, which would be terrible. Um, mm -hmm. But yeah, I figured if I if I went small here, he like I think that's our best bet of him not folding a queen, like. If he's betting queen x here and we just make it a small check raise, like I think most weaker players are just going to call. They might call a shove anyways, but I think you know there's a greater risk that we scare him out. And if he does have a flush draw, he's he's probably always calling a small check raise too, even though he you know he he doesn't have the correct price to do so usually. So mm -hmm. I, I go for like 48, which I think is okay. I mean, like I, I think against a good player, I'm probably just not taking this. Uh, I'm probably not taking this line against a good player, but uh, I mean, I think I think somebody should know that I never have a bluffing range here, like when I take the sizing. But uh, you know, it, it's a weaker player. I don't think it really matters that much. So yeah, I make it small. Yeah, I, I think it's fine. It, it's not going to matter too much. You make it like 55 or like 48 or something like that. I, I, so I agree. Well, I agree. Yeah, all in all, I, I think it's fine. So, yeah, he shoves it in. I mean, at this point, like, yeah, I'm obviously just going with it. I uh, would have liked to see him call there much, much more than shoving. Um, although, by the same token, he doesn't really have anything to protect, protect against if he has a full house. So, I'm still feeling pretty good about my hand here. Uh, I end up calling. River bricks off completely. And he shows king, queen of diamonds. So, yeah. That's pretty much the pretty much the best result. Like, so, sort of surprised he bet, like, half pot on the flop. And then like started to go crazy when a jack rolled off, but I I think my line probably really looked like a draw to him. So he, I think that's why he was so confident in his hand even on the turn. Yeah, I mean I don't know what you know. I, one of the things I, I like to do is um, think about what is the best line from my perspective because I can't really control the action of my opponents. Yeah. So you know I can't really like figure. I can't actually know what he's going. Why, why is he doing this? Um, but I try to make my actions cater to what I think is going to be the best for me. Um, that's how I like to think about hands in general. Yeah, yeah, totally. And it's always just nice when it works out. <laughs> <laughs> right. Um, okay, well, cool. Yeah, um, why don't we roll on to the second hand since we got uh, a few more to go through. This was, uh, yeah, this was an interesting hand. Uh, I remember it. Um, it's going to fold down to the button. Um, and they're going to open to 3x. Uh, only like a 10 hand sample on this guy, but he's playing 30 20 uh, with a 12% 3 bet. I mean, obviously, 10%. We're just going to take that with a grain of salt, but I still think it's enough to kind of get the sense that he's probably playing fairly aggressive. Um, mm -hmm. Probably not much to talk about pre flop. I mean, this is just a pretty standard 3 bet, I assume. Mm -hmm. Yeah, uh, I think. Uh, pretty, just yeah. for value. Let's see that flop. <laughs> yeah. So, yeah, I make it 11. I mean, sort of big, but I mean, he opened 3x, so I think it's fine. Uh, he calls, and we get a pretty good flop, uh, at least for our range. We go ace, ace, queen, three, rainbow. Pretty much just like, I think it's fair to say I'm betting most of my range on this flop, all my bluffs. I'm just going to have a lot of value here. Uh, I don't think I need to make it like too big. I think I go around a little bit over half pot, which I think is probably pretty standard. Uh, and then it just gets weird and interesting when he raises, and he raises quite big. He makes a 31, and I'm just like, 
I'm just like not really expecting this. Uh, I don't know anything about the player. Um, and yeah, I think probably probably all three options have some merit at this point, actually. Uh, mm-hmm. I, but yeah, what do you think about this spot so far, Randy? Well, first off, I'm going to say folding is probably out of the question, mainly right. because we don't know this player. For one, we, we don't know anything. We have 10 hands about him. Yeah, it looks like it could be aggressive because he's, he's but it's only 10 hands, and yeah. we really don't know uh, too much to be making this big of a fold against them. So I'm just going to fold I'll take the fold out of the question. Like, it's just not an option. Yeah, I totally and So agree. mainly, should we, should we call or should we re-raise? I think that when a player raises you on this flop, they are usually pretty polarized. Um, they either got like two pair plus, or they have nothing. Um, so like ace, three ace queen, uh, you know, in a set. The thing is that if you look at that, all the hands that beat you, a lot of them actually are not going to raise this flop. Like, and they might not even have it. Uh, on this flop because like some, a lot of players are going to re-raise pocket aces, pocket queens pre-flop, so I think we can discount those uh, a decent amount. And a lot of times when someone flops like a set here, like pocket threes, um, just like the main set that's out there, they're just going to call the flop because they're in position and there's no like flush draws to worry, be worried about. There really isn't too many straight draws, really. It's just like a lot of cut shots out there. So... I actually think um, if he's re-raising you on his flop, he's probably got, like, for value, it would be, like, ace-3 or ace-queen. But the thing is, I think he, they were going to call those hands a decent amount on, on the flop. So the other end of the spectrum, like, I don't think a lot of players are raising, like, queen-x or ace-x here. They, they're just, when you show strength and those boards come out, they're, they're, people aren't going to raise, like, ace-5 on this flop. I, I think it's just, uh, just not going to happen very often. So... You know, the thing is that there's no flush draw on the flop that I'm not really worried about letting a, a flush. There, there is no flush draw out there. I don't have to be worried about a flush getting there. And the only draws out there are, like, gut shots, you know? I don't have to worry about, like, one card, like, the king or jack. But even then, are, are they bluffing with those hands? Maybe. I don't know. But there's not too much to be worried about that I don't really think you need to raise all in on the flop because there's not much to protect against if they're bluffing um we want to let them continue bluffing and yeah that's pretty much what i'm thinking yeah i mean yeah that's i mean exactly what i was thinking too it's just like you know you, you got to be a little bit worried uh, when, because i i have seen uh i guess weaker players just just fast they just want to fast play their hands they just want to get it all in with ace queen here but mm-hmm. i mean there's also uh, there's also a decent chance he's overplaying something like ace 10 or ace jack for value and then yeah i, I mean there's i think a, i think there's got to be a large portion of his range that j- just bluffs at this point i i think I, because i did bet kind of small like a, a probably it probably looks pretty small to um to a recreational player just going like half pot here they might just be "Quote unquote pouncing on weakness or trying to and uh, and just raising it up and hoping I fold, um, but yeah, like you said, I just don't think there's a lot a lot of merit to to shoving because you know we're pretty much doing terrible against his calling range um, unless he's, yeah unless he is just raising a worse ace for for value as a pretty big overplay, so I call mm-hmm. and we get um, pretty pretty big blank on the turn being the eight of hearts uh, backdoor flush draw comes in but not not a real big concern so it's like. It's kind of a weird spot, only because I we we both only have fifty eight dollars left, and the pot's eighty five. And I, I think once we call here, like I just don't know how often he's following through on a bluff. But but by the same token, if, if he is bluffing, then you know we don't want to shove and just have him fold. So I feel like once I called, like sort of just a weird spot because I don't know how often he's following through on a bluff. But I just you know I'm pretty much like never folding at this point, um, and I don't think shoving makes a lot of sense. So. I do go ahead and, and check, and there's probably not much to talk about. I mean, he, he checks back, so when he checks back, I mean, I think I have the best hand, like, 100% of the time. Um, mm-hmm. I think he's always just shoving value, especially when another heart comes in. Yeah. Uh, and then, yeah, definitely an interesting river, the queen of hearts. Like, I'm not, I'm not feeling good about it because there is a chance he's, like, just turning queen X into a bluff on the flop, I guess, but I'm not feeling that bad about it because... Yeah, I think most of his bluffs are going to be like gut shot type hands, and I think it could work to our benefit here. I feel like 
I feel like this is a card that this guy might try to represent because like it's pretty obvious we have an ace a lot of the time when we call the flop uh, and the queen could be like a potentially scary card for us I guess mm -hmm. um, well, what are your thoughts on just shoving this river or, or just checking and then if he shoves would you check call or check fold um I wouldn't just shove here on a river you know when when someone usually just kind of shows strength like on the flop um I, w I just tend to just keep Keep on checking to them to because if if they got you beat, they got you beat. I kind of, kind of just mark it as a cooler. But the other end of the spectrum is that the bluffs. If by shoving myself, I'm not going to get called by bluffs. Right. You know what I mean? So I, I want to at least give him the opportunity to shove the rest of his chips in. And the queen actually is not really a scary card um, at all. Like I don't think. Most players, uh, whether they're regulars or playing for fun or, or whatnot, are going to raise a queen on, on the flop. Yeah, that's a good um, point. It's just like a lot of people just have the logic that, well, if I raise a queen and he shoves, and you know, I have to fold when I could at least saw a turn card. Yeah. So I think a lot of times you, you're you not really worried about the queen at all. The only reason you'd be worried is that he already had you be on the flop, and then I just mark it as a cooler. You know, if he's got ace queen, so be it. Um, but I don't think he, other. The only queen, yeah, that's pretty much the only queen I can see him having you beat with. And the thing is that when he checks back the turn, uh, when some draws come out, if he had value, I think the majority of players are going to just shove all in on the turn if they have, have you beat anyways. So yeah. when he checks back the turn, I think you have him beat like 100% of the time. Yeah. Pretty much. Um, so... Having well, I'll, I'll just quickly speed it up here because he doesn't, just to show that he does end up shoving. Mm -hmm. um, yeah, I mean, I mean, yeah, what, what, do you think he just, just always has a bluff here or, or I mean, yeah, um, it's hard to, it's hard to see what he could possibly have for value, really. I think when he checks back to turn, he pretty much uh, either has a bluff or he has a strange played <laughs> ace on the flop, like ace jack. Mm -hmm. The thing is that a lot of players, when if they did choose to raise an ace on the flop for some reason, they they aren't going to shove the river for value of an ace unless it's like ace jack exactly, maybe ace ten. They tend to just check that back a lot in the river. Mm -hmm. So I don't think you have to be too worried about um, um, losing value from another ace because I don't think they raise an ace on the flop. And if they do, they probably aren't going to bet. Like I don't. I just don't think. I just don't see them raising too often, you know what I mean? Yeah, it's definitely unusual. Mm -hmm. And like you said, I think the good thing is that the queen does, like if someone's bluffing, the queen is kind of like one of the few cards out there that looks like it could be scary. I mean, it brings the backdoor flush too. Yeah. Um. But, yeah, I don't know. I, I just don't see him having a queen. If he's got you beat, it's like, the flush a lot of times or something but yeah i'm not too worried uh, about the about the queen at all really <laughs> yeah i i mean yeah me too um so i i assume you're just always just clicking the call button and expecting to see something pretty yeah random. Was, like the thing is that you have 58 dollars and there's only 58 dollars left in this pot and you know it's like pretty big pot already so yeah not like he's uh, shoving over bed or, or something like that. I, I think that with your hand, it's just like a little bit too strong um, to fold at this point. Because especially if he, if your opponent may occasionally uh, value shove worse, like ace jack, yeah. then you need to be clicking that call button. Really. <laughs> yeah. So yeah, I mean exactly. So I, I call, and unfortunately, he showed me jack nine of hearts. So. I was kind of, I was just kind of pissed because I just kind of, kind of just made me re rethink um, my flaw play. O only, be I mean, in hindsight, I I know I'm just being 100% result, result oriented. But the only mm -hmm. reason I was thinking about maybe just uh, shoving the flop to that to that raise, just because you know the odd chance I do get called by a worst ace, and then combine that with the fact that I think he's probably just giving up bluffing a lot, but he's he's always going to see a free river like this because I'm always just going to check to him on the turn. Uh, but I, I mean, there's not that much backdoor stuff, anyways. I, I think it's probably better off to just, just yeah, play it how I played, and who knows? Maybe he turns a gut shot into a bluff. Yeah, on the I mean, occasionally you are gonna lose the pot to like something lucky, like backdoor flush or you know, some mm -hmm. weird, um hand like that. 
But you need to think about, I like to think about the plays in the long run, you know? Like, right. generally, whenever someone raises you a jack nine of hearts on ace, clean three, rainbow on a flop, they're going to lose the pot the majority of the time, you know? Yeah. Like, so as long as you think like that way, like, yeah, of course, you. whenever you slow play, you always have the chance of uh, getting sucked out on, but generally, you're going to be winning the the big pots. So, you know, if you if you can, like, train yourself to think that way, uh, you'll, you wouldn't um, second guess yourself. Yeah, I mean, that's good advice. I mean, I definitely, I definitely don't, uh, don't dwell on the results. It, it's just, my, my concern was just, like, mainly in the fact that I've, I thought, like, well, if this guy's just giving up on his bluffs anyways, like, I might as well just shove. But then again, that's not always the case. I'm actually surprised he didn't just shove this turn uh, a little bit, to be mm -hmm. honest. Uh, once he picks up the, the flush draw, you know, it seems like a pretty decent bluffing card if he is going to bluff raise that flop. But, yeah. Uh, yeah, okay, cool. Well, I'm glad, I'm you know, I'm glad I that you agree with, with the play. And uh, mm -hmm. um, we'll chalk it up. Of course, and... I'll say one last thing though if okay. if you say you had like a bigger sample size on this guy and you kind of like knew his tendencies like mm -hmm. when he takes a stab with a bluff he doesn't really do anything else later yeah then i might actually start raising re-raise the flop then if i if i like know like really sure like yeah you need well, a guy bluffs, he doesn't put any more money in the pot unless he hits it you know what I mean? Yeah. Then, then I might start just like, well, I might as well just back myself a little bit. But if you don't know enough about them, then I, I don't want to make like really big assumptions. Yeah, that's that's a good point. And yeah, I mean, like, I really had no no reads at all over ten hands on this guy. So, um, okay, let's uh, let me just bring up Randy's hands here. Mhm. Mm um, cool. They're up there. Um, yeah, so the, we're going to start with the first hand at 2-5. Uh, uh, I haven't actually seen the results of these hands. I, I mean, I know I know uh, that Randy, I know which ones he won or, won or lost, but I haven't actually uh, gone through the hands. So I'm going to be just as uh, in the dark as you guys. Uh, but I think what both both hands is kind of funny end up being against uh, another team online pro, uh, Inner, Inner Psych or Inner... Inner how do you inner even pronounce spy. his name? <laughs> uh, I always say inner inner spy, but I think it's inner psi. <laughs> uh, just have to tweet at him and find out. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so that's kind of cool. So yeah, this first hand, I mean, looks this is kind of cool because we're like uh, we're really deep. I assume this was at Zoom. Everybody gets super deep at Zoom yeah, all the yeah. time, right? <laughs> mm -hmm. So we're gonna open uh, open seven six suited from MP. Uh, what seems like a fairly standard open for you, Randy? Like, like kind of on the loose yeah, side, I'm, I guess. But just my style, I just tend to open seven six suited, no right. matter what. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I know, me, me too. <laughs> um, so we open two and a half x. Uh, cut off calls. I, I'm just guessing based on his stack size, he seems like a weaker player. Yeah, I, well, I, I didn't know too much about him, but generally, I have like mental notes on who's playing regularly, who's playing a lot of tables. And this guy just didn't pop up on my radar. Like, this guy plays a lot. So I just kind of assumed that maybe his uh, his tendencies and post-flop tendencies are going to be a little bit looser in general or just not what I would expect uh, someone who plays regularly to do. Okay, cool. Yeah, I think that probably makes 7-6 more of a clear open, too, with somebody like that behind. Mm -hmm. um, and our fellow Team Online Pro squeezes it up. So... I mean, I assume four betting's like out of the question with this hand. Um, I mean, obviously we're not folding, or I wouldn't <laughs> wouldn't be showing you guys this hand. But uh, yeah, what what, what, are, what are your thoughts for calling this squeeze? Like maybe maybe would you would you still call it a hundred big blinds deep? Um, what what's it, what's he make it sixty two? He squeezes to about twelve and a half bigs. Mm -hmm. um, yeah, I'll talk about it a little bit. Um, yeah. So, well, one is that that we are like about two hundred big blinds deep. So. Because we're so deep, I don't feel necessary to four bet this hand because one, I'm in position, so I've got a, a lot of pretty good implied odds, even though I haven't seen a flop yet with a hand like this. Um, and I'm in position, so I'm going to be able to get pretty good value if I hit my hand or, or bluff accordingly. So I think uh, being 200 big blinds deep, you can really call a lot more three bets and uh, squeezes and things like that. Um, so that's that's why I wouldn't like four betting. I think just hand is just too too good to do that with. 
you know, it's kind of like for like, would you four bet a hand like pocket sevens in a situation? Probably not. I'd rather just try and set mine rather than try and turn it into a bluff. I think you lose a, a lot of value by trying to four bet a hand this deep. Yeah. Um, but if it's like one hundred big blinds deep, it would really depend on what I think inner spy is going to do. Uh, if he's going to be squeezing tight or aggressively or whatnot. So if I think, mm, I, I think I can still make a call here, but, um, yeah, if it's, I it's kind of, he's... sorry. Um, I didn't mean to cut you off. I just wanted to say it. it's, it's sort of interesting if, uh, like if he's, a, if he's a really wide squeezer, then like, mm-hmm. you know, like there's there's kind of like different benefits to calling or not because I mean if he's a wide squeezer and we hit top pair we were going to be good a lot whereas if he has a tight range like you know we're not going to make a call down with like with like yeah. seven high but it's kind of easier to play because we can just easily fold those type. Yeah, so a lot of times when someone's like like uh, if I'm trying to like figure out because like sounds like suited you can really play against a tight range or a loose range really. Yeah. Um, if I feel like he's a tighter player then. Like, if I make a hand, I might start fast playing my hand um, now because I know me a lot of value. But if he's, like, a looser player um, that's uh, squeezing, like, wider, then if I've got, like, if I pick up, like, I'm not going to make a, hand, a big hand a lot of time, but sometimes I'm going to pick up, like, draws or, like, pretty good draws. I might play those draws really aggressively, expecting a lot more fold equity because he's going to be squeezing a lot wider range. So th- I would change, like, my post-flop tendencies based on... Uh, what I think of his pre-flop range. Hmm, cool. Yeah, I think that's a super important point. Um, so yeah, I'm not. I mean, I, I actually haven't seen it, but I assume you're gonna go ahead and call here. Kind of nice to have, you know, what we sort of think is dead money. Hopefully, coming along too from the weaker mm-hmm. player. That you know, if we just make our hand, it's easier to get paid. Uh, he ends up calling. Uh, I guess the last thing is like, what do you think of Inner's uh, squeezing range here, 200 big blinds deep? Do you know much about it? Um, generally, I. I don't really know too much about a lot of the players too into big line deep uh, squeezing in general. Yeah, fair enough. I think like generally like he's just not going to be pure bluffing a lot. Like he's I don't think he's going to be squeezing like five seven suited hands like that or like king five suited. because um, I think he expects the player who flat called to call a lot of squeezes. Mm-hmm. So I think his range actually is a little bit like strong or like more like Broadway type hands because if you expect like your opponent to call a lot you're not going to be you shouldn't be squeezing like weak kind of hands um, because you're just going to be a dominate a lot or, or things like that right yeah Th- that's what I was kind of thinking he's probably like squeezing like some kind of like extended value range here because like you said I just think he has to kind of expect a call from at least the weaker player um, he mm-hmm. probably doesn't have like you said any like any pure bluffs here like ever he's probably expecting you to come along for the ride quite often too just being so deep so mm-hmm. yeah we get a flop of 10 4 3 2 hearts uh kind of interesting let's see what happens here so inner checks and yeah what are you thinking at this point um the thing is i think that a lot of times players when they're like 200 big blinds deep they uh they tend to kind of slow play some big hands a decent amount too um like aces and kings just kind of like he doesn't want to he's a little bit he just want to pot control a little bit sometimes you know yeah, that makes sense and they go either way um yeah. but regardless like i i think i could choose it really depends on what i think he does like if i think he continuation bets like a lot of his air here because it's such a dry flop you know 10 4 3 with a flush draw like then if i think he's going to continuation bet a lot of his air then when he actually checks like, I actually think he's got a piece sometimes. You know what I mean? Because I think he would continuation bet yeah. his air. So then, if I think he's got a piece, I don't think betting this flop is going to do too much for me. Like, if I think he's going to bet ace-king on a flop, then he's probably not going to fold. He probably doesn't have ace-king when he checks. So I'm, those are, like, the type of hands I would expect to fold out. But he, I don't think he has those hands. So that's why I choose to, um, you know, not bet in, in this situation. Yeah, I, I agree. I think it's probably pretty... Well... I mean, I think with the weaker player in the cutoff, it'd probably be like more likely for Inner to just go ahead and bet like 10x plus here. Mm-hmm. But I mean, I, I I totally see your point about him possibly checking uh, checking an overpair, just being so deep. Um, yeah. So I mean, yeah, like, his range probably isn't know. as weak as, as. I don't know much about what. 
But yeah, yeah, I like I, I just don't know what he does too much, like two hundred big blinds deep. But I think like I could bet, but I'm just uh, I just feel like he he would just bet a lot on a flop if he if he had air. Yeah, and I guess like mm-hmm. I mean I mean we have seven high like and and the cutoff has one hundred and fifty. He has less than a pot size bet left, so. If we bet here, I mean, and get called by the cutoff, which is probably going to happen a decent amount of the time. I mean, we have seven highs, so it's not great. <laughs> it's not like just in mm-hmm. or like worried about, right? So we mm-hmm. check, and it gets checked through, which is nice. We get the free card. Uh, bank is straight, which is pretty sweet, but it brings it hard, which, you know, kind of taints, taints it a little bit. Mm-hmm. Uh, and then inner checks again. Um, I mean, I assume, I assume we just have to bet here. Yeah, I, I think at this point when you when you see a check around on this flop, it kind of looks like no one's got much, and then it checks around on this. Well, I mean, like he checks again on turn. Like I, I need to bet here and protect my hand, get value from like either a pot controlled big hand from I mean, just by like pocket queens or something, or just even if he's got like ace queen ace jack with like a random heart ace king with like a king of hearts. I need to start charging these hands now. So yeah. I think it's. Yeah, I, spe- I think um, especially bringing the gut shot, like there's a pretty decent chance of check of stacking the cutoff here if he does have like ace x with the heart. Mm-hmm. Uh, so we go ahead and bet 105. Uh, cutoff folds and inner check raises. <laughs> so it's, yeah, it's it's a really gross spot. I mean, it's hard to know without knowing much about his his, his range uh, or his c betting range. Um, it it kind of looks like full of it right off the bat but then again uh, yeah i really have no idea i mean we have no hearts we don't block any flushes it's seems like it could be a potentially i mean if the hand was over now it's just a pretty easy call i guess but i mean it could potentially be pretty gross on a rivers if he's going to follow through a lot Mm -hmm. yeah like um it's it's a tough situation but um sometimes me and inner spy we really have like a really aggressive dynamic like we just try to bluff each other <laughs> and things like that <laughs> yeah. um, but so he's definitely capable of bluffing here where well, some players may may never um, bluff in this situation the question is if he's bluffing here with like ace king with like either ace of heart or king of hearts or a hand like that which I think is pretty reasonable yeah um does he ever follow through when he misses on the river and that's the question and I think he I think he would if I didn't think he would ever follow through with a bluff on a river, like on a blank, then I would just shove all in here and just protect my hand, I think. Hmm. Um, there's no reason to give him a free chance. He would ever do this with like a weaker... Fl- no, one thing is, do I think he'd ever do this with like a weak flush on a turn, like um, Jack, Nine, of, I don't know, Queen, Jack, Hearts, whatever yeah. flush there, there that isn't a nut flush? Um, I'm not sure. But I, I think that a lot of players, when they're, like, 200 big lines deep, they really don't want to get in 200 big lines unless they have, like, a really good hand, you know what I mean? Oh, yeah, I, I um, totally agree. I, I don't think, yeah, that would be a pretty unusual, so. So unusual think, line from a, from a I think medium. I can discount, like, a reasonable amount of his flushes, in my opinion. Um, if he's got, like, the nut flush, then I think he could maybe do this play, but he might scare me off his hand. Like, I'm not really sure, to be honest, 200 big blinds deep, but the point is that um, I like calling if I think he's there's a chance that when he bluffs, he's going to continue bluffing. If you think he's going to continue bluffing sometime, then I want to call here because even though another heart would be terrible for me, you know, I don't have to worry about, like, a two or a six. Like, sometimes that brings out a wheel, but I've got the not straight here, so I'm not I'm not worried about that at all. Yeah. So really, I want to like allow him to maybe continue train of thought on a turn. Um, yeah, that makes a lot of sense. Um, yeah, I, I don't really have much to add. I think, like you said, I mean, his most likely buff think bluffing hands here have to be like Ace King with a heart. Um, I think we can maybe feel like a little bit better about our hand than than usual, only because he probably probably bets a flush draw on the flop at least a decent amount of the time. Mm-hmm. Like, probably not all, maybe not always, but at least a decent amount he's going to be betting yeah. for those flush draws. That's kind of like one of the things that's kind of like one of the things that's going through my mind is that, like, I think he would bet a flush draw on the flop a good amount of time. Maybe not 100%, but, you know, a decent amount. That, yeah. And I think that he would if he was trying to trap the flop of a flush draw, you know, when he actually 
he hits on the turn. I think he would actually probably bet the flush on the turn a lot, in my opinion. Because when he checks the flop, I think he expects me to bet a flush draw if I had one. So I think that on the turn, he actually doesn't think I have a flush a lot because I check back the flop with him. That, that's, that's what I was thinking on the turn. So that's why I wasn't like... Normally I would be pretty scared of a flush on a turn, but he he went for the double check on, on the flop and turn such that I'm thinking he doesn't think I have a flush very often. That's why I'm not too worried about it. Yeah. Um, I mean, I'm, th- I'm thinking the same thing at this point, to be honest, uh, but let's see what happens. Um, okay. So, you know, eight on the river changes nothing. Uh, let's see what inner does. And he rips it in on us. So, I mean, Obviously, we're bluff catching. Like he's never playing anything worse for value. Like even a set of tens would would like never take this line. So, uh, yeah, just for all the reasons we mentioned on the turn, I just assume we're just bluff catching at this point. Just clicking the call button and hoping he's got ace king with ace hearts. Yeah, I pretty much made my decision on the turn. Like as long as a heart doesn't roll off, right? I'm just gonna call it off um, because I think he he's capable of making a bluff here. Pretty much, that's what I was thinking. Yeah, even if do do you think he has ever has set, sets in his range? Like, if the river was like a four or five, or like paired the board, uh, I mean, I think probably still calling. I think the only set he can have really is top set of tens, um, because I don't think he's going to be squeezing pocket fours, pocket threes, and pocket fives pre flop. So when you know, yeah. like in re race pot, you can really narrow someone's range. I think the only set that's out there is really pocket tens yeah i agree and I, and even then it probably doesn't take this line it's kind of like an overplay um uh, on the mm-hmm. turn but anyway so he shoves let's see what happens he calls oh and he did have a set of tens <laughs> well that <laughs> that's seems pretty funny that's that is funny that seems ridiculous it just seems like too much of an overplay to me uh, on the turn i mean you, you did you did kind of explain it though how you're not gonna have a flush there very often but mm-hmm. i mean i don't know yeah, I you, think you could still have a flush there. Uh, like I don't know, you're not always going to be his, betting a flush draw. His point of view was that, yeah, he saw me check the flop back with him. That he probably just kind of discounted a decent amount of flushes in my range, and I'm guessing that when I uh, bet the turn, and you know, I, I, it's just that he wants to protect his hand of a top set of tens. Like there are a lot of bad cards for him like a two, an ace, a six, you know, like there's like, it would bring out some straights out there and, you know, another heart's going to bring a, a flush out there. So I can, there's a lot of merit for him to, to kind of like protect his hand on the turn like he did. Yeah. Do, do you think it would be better if you just, um, just bet the turn? Like that seems like a better line to me. It's just, um, yeah, that's, if, that's if what check. I probably would have done in his shoes. I think I would just bet out on the turn myself, um, and just, because you just yeah. look so polarized with the check raise, right? Like, plus, like that's why I was saying it's kind of like, it almost looks like a bit of an overplay because in your mind, you know, you're worried about flushes. I mean, there's probably not. Well, there's going to be a bit of a difference between set of tens and flushes, but mm-hmm. um, yeah, you you know. Yeah, I probably would have just bet out myself on a turn in his shoes um, because like checking to check raise, it's kind of like if I'm bluffing, like I might not even bet like king queen with like one heart here. So he's kind of like giving me free chance to to suck out on him by checking. Like if I have like ace jack with one heart or no heart, you know, like probably just going to check it. So really he's just kind of like giving me a free, like giving two players a free shot at sucking out on him. Like whether it's a heart, a two, or whatever it is. Um, so I would probably just bet out myself and protect my hand. Um, not really expecting to play a really big pot uh, normally. Cool. Yeah. Well, that was yeah definitely interesting. Um, more so by the fact that I have no idea what the results are. <laughs> and I was like, that was, that was pretty funny that he showed pocket tens. <laughs> yeah, he never. Like, there's, there's no way he has pocket tens. <laughs> um, okay. Well, cool. We got uh, we got one more hand. We've been running for like 49 minutes here, so maybe we can make this about an hour long and mm-hmm. and call it a day. This has been good so far. Uh, so now we're yeah now we're playing playing really high stakes here we're at 510 uh the whole table is like 200 big blinds deep it looks like so i assume this will get pretty crazy pretty fast Mm -hmm. um 
It's going to fold to our buddy uh, inner, inner Psych, Inner Spy on the cutoff again. Uh, button folds, and um, yeah, I assume we three bet this. Uh, like, maybe you want to just briefly talk about your uh, like your small blind game plan. Like, I, I personally mm-hmm. just three bet my entire continuing range, unless there's like, unless there's like a weaker player in the big blind, and I have a hand that just like doesn't play great by three betting. Uh, is that your style, or do you do you fly here sometimes too? Um. Well, like, so this table is just pretty much full of pretty good regulars. Yeah, that's um, what it looks like. So against a table like that, I like to just kind of retake the initiative because they're going to be squeezing a lot more. And, in, uh, you know, I'm usually going to be three betting a lot of three betting my value hands like queens, kings, and aces, and ace, king. So when I flat call, my hand's actually pretty weak a lot of times, so people can kind of pounce on it a lot. I don't like to give people that opportunity. So I think if I want to play a hand, I like three betting it, especially out of position. Um, a lot of times he's just going to fold pre-flop or he's just going to fold the flop yeah i I, it just likes like there's some hands that just like you you know you kind of want to fly with like king queen suited like pocket Mm -hmm. fours like whatever it's but it's just like so hard to have a balanced three betting and flatting range if you play that way i think Mm -hmm. like because you're all you know you never you're never really going to want to flat aces because there's just so much value to three bet so i think your calling range is always going to be left a little bit weak um but yeah anyways that's just I don't recommend like having like when you're playing against like tough games with a lot of good regulars. Um, I like I try not to be like too obvious with my ranges. You know, if I'm just flat calling only my pocket pairs here and like yeah. King Queen, it's like so defined my range that it's really easy to play against. And if yeah. you're playing against people like thousands of hands, um, you don't really want to have your ranges to be in such a way that it's really easy to play against um it's just gonna put you at a big disadvantage mainly yeah e- exactly so uh yeah we go ahead and three bet big blind folds and inner calls um pretty good flop two jack six rainbow um i mean the flop's so dry i i assume i assume like we just see bet most of the time here like this seems to be a board that's uh, it's it's probably like decent for his range because he's gonna have like sevens through tens a lot, but mm-hmm. uh, you know we're gonna have that too probably, and we're gonna have the over pairs. So seems like it's a board that kind of favors us. Yeah, I think that. Well, generally, like if if I'm bluffing here pre flop and it comes jack six two rainbow, I'm gonna continue bluffing on this flop. Right. So I, I want to put some hands that are valued that way. I don't want to be only betting. Queens, kings, and aces—they don't just come off enough. So I want to be betting like when I flop a, a decent piece out here. And you know, of course, of course, I'm on position. Might as well protect my hand against like an ace or a queen on the turn. Um, you know, just just start, just kind of play the hand now. And so I just think betting is best in this spot. Okay, cool. So uh, yeah, we go. We don't have to make it very big. I mean, it's such a, such a dry board here. Uh, we go ahead and make it about, about half pot, a little less than half pot. Um, and he calls, which, you know, we're probably expecting him to do this a lot, right? Like, he's, he can have a lot of floats here, too, I assume. Like, King, Queen, or I guess yeah. he can have, he can have King, Queen, Hearts, I was going to say. Like, King, Queen of Spades, like, uh, Ace, Four, um, So, uh, I think that he would have, like, King, Queens. Um, like, some people, like, just, they would just fold flop when they miss. But I think uh, we have a good dynamic that he would have a decent amount of floats. Like, usually they're going to be, like, Broadways or, like, good Ace Highs, like Ace, Queen. Ace ten, king queen. Um, other than that, I think he's got like a lot of pairs, so, like any six five, you know, six seven, or like jack ten, jack queen, nines, tens. You know, that's pretty much I think his uh, his his range in general. Um, yeah, that so, makes yeah. sense. Yeah, <laughs> um, yeah, we're feeling pretty good about our hand at this point. Um, like not the best turn, I guess. I mean, jack ten gets there, pocket tens get there. Um, mm-hmm board's still pretty dry um i mean i honestly would would struggle a lot with this spot especially being so deep i mean i i don't know what happens in the hand so i guess i'll just i, I would probably just bet again but i could see merits for paw controlling at this point maybe the problem with like checking is if he bets you know and then bets big on the river it kind of sucks for us um mm-hmm. I, I don't know what maybe maybe what's your thought process yeah. here and regardless of uh regardless if you get to a river and there's a bet on the turn it's going to be tough no matter whether you're the better or he's the better mm-hmm. honestly 
Yeah, true. Uh, so, but the main thing is that I can go with betting or checking, really. Um, it's just going to kind of depend on, like, what's... One of the things I'm going to think about is what's been going on before. Like, I don't really remember exactly what's been going on before, but if I've been, like, kind of, like, doing one barrel on three bet pots and giving up, then I kind of, like, checking to kind of, like, sometime have a hand I can continue with. You know what I mean? Yeah, that makes sense. Um, but if, if I've been barreling a lot, maybe I'll just bet here to kind of continue protecting my, my, my barrels. Um, but I, I really, the 10 is, the Jack 10 is going to be like the main card I'm concerned, you know, main hand I'm work, like feeling pretty, pretty bad. Yeah. You know, yeah. you know uh, I don't know, I, I like betting sometimes, I like checking. I think that, that because we're 200 big blinds deep, or like hundred, like hundred ninety big lines, or whatever it is. Uh, I like. I chose to ch- check. I think checking would be good because Inner Spy he, he can make some pretty big moves, and I really don't want to put all the chips in if I don't have to on this turn card. Like if I say I bet the turn and he he did float me or something, or he just want to make a big draw, move a draw here. I, I think he's capable of doing that. That's why I don't really like betting as much against him like really deep if I don't have to um, because I think he can really like put a lot of pressure on me um, so so that's why I think checking kind of like, controls the pot a bit yeah yeah he's, he definitely seems to be the type of player who's like capable of making moves like turning hands into a bluff like I could see Betty and him raising 6-7 here uh, mm-hmm. something like that um, also yeah I don't know I'm just thinking yeah, I like, mean like we pro we probably don't have too many bluffs if we uh if we bet this turn like uh, we you know you're probably not always firing like ace king or ace queen on this turn even though we pick up some equity like if i don't know if it was like a spade like there might be a couple more legit semi bluffs we would have like we would, mm-hmm. with them we would probably always barrel ace queen of spades ace king of spades or something but I don't know, on this dry board, like, if he's floating, it depends on how much he's floating too, right? Or, like, if he has a hand like sevens, eight, nines, or, like, fives or something, uh, he might just think we're check folding this turn and just kind of stop with those hands. So, I mean, there's just, like, so much to consider, and it's just, like, a ridiculous spot being so deep. It's just, like, <laughs> That's it's just thing. so tough. When you get really deep, like, at least, like, 150-plus big blinds, in this case, 180 big blinds, hands are kind of tough. Honestly, that's why you really don't want to play too many pots out of position with like yeah. kind of random hands. Um, yeah. You're gonna get in a lot of tough situations, and I won't lie, this is a pretty tough situation for me. Um, Cause like yeah. you're really deep, and we, um, I think a lot of players just don't have that much history of each other um, playing deep, um, just because you you default playing with 100 big lines as the cap max buy-in for these tables. So, you know. I like when I don't know too much about someone. Sometimes I kind of take like a more passive route uh, to kind of like sure. figure out things and just trying to like keep the variance a little bit lower. You know, what I mean, like just kind of like not play really in loaded pots if I don't have to. Yeah. Um, but I definitely do think I could check or bet myself. Um, which one's better yeah. is really hard. Yeah, I, I agree. There seems to be a lot of, you know, a lot of benefits uh, to both, really. So let's just see what happens here. So we go ahead and check, mm-hmm. and he he bets pretty big, which is probably pretty gross because it looks like he's trying to set up some kind of river shove or, or big river bet. Um, mm-hmm. Yeah, I mean, I guess this is, again, just, like, so opponent-dependent, but I, I don't really see how we can, like, fold this hand without, like, some kind of, like, sick read. Like, if we're folding, like jack king here we you know that can't be that can't be just good for our overall game plan i think mm-hmm. yeah like that's kind of what i'm thinking and just kind of a hand is kind of a hand that you think about your whole, whole game plan too you know like what what's been going on like you know, like i said earlier like you know like are you betting here with bluffs and just check for and turn you know things like that um i think like king jack is like kind of it's pretty strong here, but there really is like very few bluffs here that most opponents are going to have. But the thing is that I think Inner Spy he turns hands into bluffs more like more than like a tighter reg. I think he is willing to float flops a little bit more than most regs, such so such that I think there's a decent amount of hands that I can I still beat on the turn. 
Um, whereas some tighter players, I might just actually make a big fold here on the turn thinking there's no way he's bluffing. There's no flush draw. There was no straight draw on the flop. You know what I mean? Um, yeah. But against Inner Spy, I just feel like he has more. He When he bets a turn, it doesn't mean he's only got you beat. I think it means that he sometimes has some bluffs. So that's why I think that I should be continuing here at least on the turn. Yeah, I agree. Um, I mean, I don't know anything about his game, but just, I mean, from the other hand alone, he seems to be capable of, of making plays um, mm-hmm. that, yeah, that aren't aren't just standard. <laughs> <laughs> right, so, pretty much. It's very complicated. It's a complicated relationship. <laughs> <laughs> so, um, I mean, we go ahead and call, like, I mean... Like we pretty much just have a bluff catcher at this point. I would mm-hmm. I, like he's probably not going to take that line with like Queen Jack. I mean, yeah, you're, maybe, he, uh, you know, he might he might bet, but then he he's probably always checking the river, and I don't know if he would choose that sizing. So, uh, we're calling, and eh, kind of a blank river. I mean, like eight and nine gets there, which is probably in his range, but especially like eight nine of spades, eight nine of hearts, eight nine of diamonds. He's probably floating those at least some percentage of the time on the flop and mm-hmm. probably always betting on the turn. Mm-hmm. Um, but yeah, I mean, other than that, uh, nothing really improves. Um, obviously, we're going to check. And yeah, I mean, it's, it's pretty gross. Like, this is like, he looks like he's he's sizing up, up on the turn to, to do a bit of an overbet shove on the river, which which it, it's sort of similar to the last hand where, I mean, like, we know we're bluff catching, but like, we're pretty much making our decision on the turn. Like, I assume because because we we do know he's he's capable of of showing up with or following through with bluffs, right? Well, I think this situation is a little bit different. That I didn't really make my decision on turn. Um, it really like depends on his river sizing. Was kind of like I think at the time that's what I was thinking. I I think like there's like a lot of like kind of weird cards that can come out on a river that would change your decision, you know what I mean, on a turn. Uh, but when he overbets the river, that's kind of like, hmm, interesting, you know what I mean? Like, why are you overbetting this river? Um, so, you know, it was definitely, it's a tough situation, like 1,300, like, it's not easy, I'll tell you that. <laughs> but 8, 9 is like, can be in his range, but it's very a small part of his range because, yeah, he'll sometimes float eight nine suiteds on the flop that have backdoor flush draw. But I also think he's going to fold those sometimes too. So it's a very small yeah. percentage. So then, I don't think the seven doesn't really improve him very often, in my opinion. So I guess the the main component in thinking of this hand is, well, what does he think I have? And I think. And his, I think that a lot of times he thinks I have like at least a jack in my hand. So whether it's like a, a hand like I have, like queen jack, king jack, ace jack, or I've got like pocket queens through aces. I think that's, that's what he thinks I have a lot of time. I don't think he expects me to call with like 10x here that left the flop and, you know, hit on turn. Because there's just like no flush draws out there. There's like it's not that many hands. I don't think he expects me to call like king queen or ace king or ace queen on the turn. Um, just being out of position and no flush draws out there. Uh, I just think it's very ambitious. So I don't. I think a lot of times he actually thinks I have a pair a lot, like at least jack x. Like, you know yeah, I mean? it looks like he's trying to get you up jack x. I mean, he's he he'd probably play any set this way. I assume. Mm-hmm. Like yes. like like. Do you know? Do you know if he? Uh, like I don't know, we have not, we don't have to go into his game too much, but I mean, like, what do you think he would overbet with a set here? Or is, bet I don't know. Yeah. <laughs> I don't really know what he would do. So we have to use like I have to use like really educated guess and feeling at the time. Like two hundred big blinds deep. Like I said, I don't really know too much about most regulars play. I don't think he knows how I play two hundred big blinds. I don't know how he plays two hundred big blinds deep. We just yeah, really just don't know. But the thing that I was thinking about is, at least at the time with him willing to make a big call right now that's what i was thinking and i was thinking if I, and i thought no i don't think he's going to think that i'm going to call with a hand like ace jack here or like even queens or kings here i, I didn't uh, yeah i was going to quickly ask you like if you are going to call down this seems like one of the better hands to do it with i mean like 
the, there's probably no difference between King yeah. Jack and Pocket Aces here, right? Yeah. And like with the Jack, at least we have the blocker. Like we know. So I think it's a set. good. So here's one thing. I do think it's good that he. It's nice for me to actually when he overbets that I can discount a decent amount of his value range. I think if he had like Ace Jack, he's not going to overbet Jam here because he's kind of like right. value owning himself a lot. Like if I do make a call of like aces or kings or something, yeah. Um, I don't think he's gonna overbet value jam like queens here either. Like if he decide to not want to make a big pop preflop because he's a really deep preflop. Like I don't think he's going to do that a lot of times. I just think that when he overbets, this is like the first hand that happened in this session where we played this really big pot at five ten no limit, uh, or like you know I mean like he just we didn't have enough history for. To, to start thinking like we're going to make big calls on each other yet. That's what I was thinking in my head. So because of that, when he makes this really big overbet, yeah. it kind of looks like to me like he doesn't think I'm going to make a big call. So if he had me beat with like jack 10, jack 6s or 2s, I thought that he wouldn't just he would just bet pretty big, but not like overbet all in. That's what I was thinking at the time. Yeah, it really polarizes um, him. Yeah. So I mean I I guess I mean we know you're gonna call here or I'm pretty sure you wouldn't have given me this hand but uh, <laughs> but I have no idea what he has I'm just trying to think I mean like okay if we win this hand what do I expect him to show up with I'm gonna say I'm gonna say king queen is is possible or maybe mm, Maybe like pocket eights or pocket mm -hmm. nines. That's kind of my guess. Let's see what happens. So we call. Huh. Mm -hmm. He's got ace king. Yeah, that's interesting. I mean, I mean, yeah. I assume he was basically doing exactly mm -hmm. what you thought he might be doing, just trying to get you off jack x. Um, it's pretty honestly. It's yeah, I don't know. Scary. I'm trying to think what I think I of think his, that, what that, I think like, about his line. Eight hundred dollars, yeah. you know, like more reasonable or more like a normal size bet. Um, I might actually consider making a pretty big fold of like King Jack or something like that. It, but like I said, when when he overbets, I kind of discount a lot of a decent amount of value hand. Like it makes his hand really polarized. That I I'd kind of discount like Ace Jack and like, like Queens or something like that. I mean, does that that? So it, that's why yeah, that's, it makes it a little bit easier for me to call when he did that overbet um, because I thought that he would have, you know, only really, really, really strong hands like two pair plus, um, if for value at least. And mainly, yeah, I was last yeah, week saying from my point of view, I guess to decide whether to call or not is really do I think he's going to bluff here a decent amount? Um, some players would just never bluff here, and I'll just easily fold even aces here but at the time i just thought yeah you know for the history we had i think it was pretty aggressive at the time that um he was capable of doing it so pretty much yeah i uh, yeah i'm just i'm just thinking um do you think do you think ace king is is i mean i think it seems like probably one of the best hands to to bluff with actually i mean he block just because he blocks aces and kings he doesn't block any jacks uh, i'm just trying to think of like what other hands i would be bluffing with in his shoes i mean like i think this mm -hmm. is probably one of the yeah hands i mean to bluff with. ace king pretty much if he's bluffing it's almost always like ace king ace queen king queen i i think um because yeah. actually a lot of times if they someone has like nines eights or like a pair of sixes or jack they're just going to check it down they're happy to just check it down that's fine i'd be pretty happy to do that too actually um yeah i i think and i think his bluff is actually pretty good honestly because his hand looks really strong calling the flop betting the turn and betting the river it it looks pretty strong there's no draws out there on the flop and on the turn you know what i mean so really, it comes down to floating ability. You know, like is he willing to float hands? And his hand looks really strong. Um, I think like usually I would probably fold this river, uh, but just something like kind of came to me like the the the, the stars are aligned. Like this is like he's bluffing me right now. <laughs> yeah. 
<laughs> no, I, I think there is like there's a lot of merit to uh, to how things are going within the session. And like you were saying, if it's early on in the session, I think people have a tendency to, to bluff mm-hmm. more because they just don't think they're there's just like not as much I don't know dynamic created yet and the, the yeah like you said that he probably just expects you to make less call down so it, yeah these spots I mean I guess a I lot mean, of it just comes yeah. down to to in the in the moment and I mean obviously you're thinking about ranges but I mean this is obviously I think I think we both agree this spot's pretty well defined as him mm-hmm. having like a set or a bluff or, yeah you know, maybe some I mean straight it's a tough um, hand I want like, a tough gonna, hand and like, I, I like his bluff a lot because I think he doesn't like, a lot of players in general just don't, don't bluff here, like, in this situation, like, how he did very often. So, they, they often get a lot of credit. I just happen to be like, oh, I'm, I'm a hero right now. <laughs> Too bad. <laughs> but, yeah, and look, yeah. I mean, see, that's one thing. No, fair enough. Being bluffs, if, you, if they're better when they're credible. And in this situation, I think it's easy for him to a pair of twos, pair of sixes, pair of jacks, you know, for a set, or jack ten. I think it's very, very likely. Um um, yeah, I don't know. I, he's a good player, and he, it, as you can see, he just puts people in a lot tougher spots than normal. <laughs> yeah, no, that's that's uh, pretty sick. You just won more <laughs> money than my car's worth with that call, so <laughs> so that was pretty sweet. <laughs> um, okay, well, yeah, I mean, this has been great. It's been an hour and ten minutes. Uh, probably a good spot to wrap it up. Uh, yeah, thanks so much for doing this, Randy. Thanks for uh, for joining me. I'm, I'm sure you guys will appreciate it who are watching. Um, you got the links up here to Randy's Facebook and Twitter if you're not already following him, which you probably are, but they're there in case. Um, Randy, you, got, you have a I plan on having it up uh, by Team Online Week coming up soon, guys. Be on the lookout for that. <laughs> and that's just uh, Randy. Nanonoco.com, but they'll Nanonoco. both get you there. <laughs> okay. <laughs> All right, sweet. Okay, guys. Well, uh, yeah, this has been Frosty and Randy. Uh, good luck at the tables and take care.